Please understand that small children were not meant to see the following video, for it holds the potential to contain vast use of foul language, anywhere from the F-bomb to the N-word, and by the N-word I do mean noob, and not nigga or any of its variations. Please enjoy the following. Peace out, niggas. Hello everybody, it's JV once again, and I'm doing a video response to the Dreadman, in which he brought some really good points about how white people might feel about black people, or black people feel about white people in the dating realm. If a white guy would think that a white girl is contaminated after being with a black guy. And on that note, I live in the South. So who, know, who better to know or have any experience than someone from the South? Because I've dated two white girls over the course of my, I don't know, illustrious and prestigious dating career. And, you know, both sets of parents absolutely despised my guts. They hated me to my core before they even knew who I was or what I was about. And, honestly, I could blame them. But then at the same time, when you are probably a white person, because I'm a black guy, and sometimes I'll see a white person on TV do something crazy and be like, wow. And then my mind just you know, puts that white people into a category with this guy who was just one crazy asshole. And that was just one guy. But time and time again, you hear people that should be quote-unquote role models in the black community. Michael Vick, uh, Ray Lewis, Jamal Lewis, and then you got um, Kimbo Slice, and you got, uh, what's his name, Plexico Burris, and these are just athletes. And then you have other comedians, and then you have rap music, and all you hear is about this person locked up, locked up, locked up, locked up, doing weed, doing crack cocaine, meth, Whitney Houston dying, and people having this speculation that she went back to old habits. Then you got a uh, gang fight, gang fight, gang fight, shooting, people getting stabbed. You got um this image of, you know, Latinos and Latin American people of, you know, all kinds, not just Mexicans anymore being bunch of illegals being wet backs and just being a whole bunch of freeloaders in our country but a lot of this isn't true it's just what you see by the media and propaganda thrown your way and what your mind is just set to absorb because when you look at a tv even if you're not really focused on what's going on if you just look at it your mind's going to absorb things subconsciously for example i live in the south and my my little cousin right here i don't know very pretty blah 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 and she won a beauty pageant. And she was the only person of any ethnic, really, that wasn't white. She's half black and half white. Now, here's the thing. With that said, all the white people are like, huh? Oh, my God. The black girl. Oh, my God. It won. And, like, people were acting like there's some huge spectacle. When, you know, the three black people, me and her parents, went to go see how she did, you know, giving her that support, they didn't see it as us being supporting people, you know, playing that supporting role, being that backbone, being there for her, being a firm family with good connections. They just saw us as some black people trying to steal the show. Because, let's face it, when you watch a sporting event, what do a lot of black athletes want to do? Steal the show! Exactly! Steal the spotlight! Be selfish! We got Terrell Owens and people like that. Chad Ochocinco. Like I said, it is a, it's something in the mind that just puts that black people connotate, show off, connotate, rude, ignorant, etc. And none of that is true. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a lot, but that's of every race. And uh, as for the white parents that hated me, when they see me and the way I dress, I'm not going to lie, I wear baggy jeans. I don't have them sagging off my ass, but I just wear baggy jeans. I wear, you know, sunglasses, you know, I grow my hair out, I look all rugged and whatnot, and I wear, like, big hoodies. So they think I'm some type of thug, and instead of just thinking of me as just, just another guy that their daughter just happens to be dating, they think that I'm all of, well, this. And with that said, with music like that, white people are exposed to that more than, you know, other things. I mean, let's face it. How many times do you hear on a black TV show, the black guy got to have either A, the thug accent, or listen to just 
ethnic music that apparently all black people listen to you know the hardcore rap etc so on so forth that's why a white person has that image of what a black person is very generic and not even a vivid in-depth look into the black culture and just sees it as just fuck you fuck this anarchy all girl hoes on my dick slap a bitch slap a hoe and all that stuff and they see people that should be role models in our community or equivalent to role models in the white community like actors, ball players, you know, people like that getting all this trouble and going to jail and whatnot for drugs, etc., murder, so on and so forth. And they see us as just that, what they perceive, what they see on the media, not actually getting to know them physically. That's why a lot of white people sit there and say, I have this one good black friend, as if all the black people on the earth are terrible except for that one good black friend or when um black people we can sit down pow jackass comes on the TV and we're automatically thinking all white people are idiotic jackasses who don't care about anything and get paid for it thus we think all white people are just pieces of shit jackasses and that's kind of where that whole contrast seems to butt heads and then no, nothing ever gets done because we have that mental image that we just project on everybody that fits the description. Everybody racial profiles. Everyone. So when you see a white girl with a black guy, white people see that black guy, no matter how he is dressed, no matter how articulate he talks, they're going to see him as, hey man, talking about not talking about now, girl, I put peanut butter on my dick there. She'd be, oh yeah, baby, oh, uh, bitches, hoes. And, you know, when you see a white boy with a black girl, you know, black guys see that white girl as, she my slave. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm making money every day, all day, every day. I listen to Christian rock. Yeah. And that's just how we see them. Doesn't mean that's the way they are. We don't get to know them. But that's just how we project our ideas and stereotypes onto them. So when we see it, we don't like it. But at the same time, you wouldn't want someone projecting their ideas on you. But we have that double standard, and that's just what we do as people. It sucks, but that's what happens. And that's kind of why uh, black guys see a white girl with a black guy, and they're just like, dude, what the hell are you doing? You're dating that? And they automatically assume, no matter how the white girl looks, no matter how smart she is, no matter how dumb she is, no matter what music she listens to, we think she's the the country hick that happens to be smart and came into some money with blonde hair and blue eyes and apparently thinks she's better than everybody else and is a prep and uses, says the word like 50,000 times a sentence. And that's just how it is. But I probably wasted more than enough of your time, so there you go. Back to you.